So thank you. I'm here to tell you about the mission, about the um, path of lawyer well-being, and maybe enroll you or tell you that there's actually a, a whole movement happening. It's a movement to change the legal profession, a movement to change the culture, to one where we appreciate the whole person, the body, the physical, the mental, the spiritual. And we, we honor that because that's what brings competence. That'll help us be better lawyers. That'll help us be better people. I love what you guys are saying. What these people are saying is what is the this mission that's happening. It's happening throughout North America. There's a movement happening. Because law should be like that. Law is so empowering. It's a way we exercise our brains. We re relate to people. We help. It's important. We train. And it's fun. We're, look at the fun people we work with. But we've let, our profession has let us down. The, the level of addiction is very high. 21% of the lawyers have problematic drinking. 32% under 30 years old have problematic drinking and 40% of lawyers drink too much. 28% of lawyers have serious depression, 19% serious anxiety, and what's really, I know this is true, 60% report having had problems as a result of anxiety. That's a profession that's having a problem. And the, but the real problem that came out from this study is that only 7% of the lawyers who know they have a problem with uh, substance use get help. 30% who know they have a problem with depression get help or anxiety. And most of them go to a doctor and get medication because of stigma. There's a stigma that says you gotta be strong you got to be strong. You, gotta, you can't reach out for help. You dig in. You put your head down, you go. You do none of the things that these people say. You certainly don't share your stories. Don't share your wounds. You just push on. And then you know when you've finished all that hard work and you've driven yourself to exhaustion, you can go relax. Have a drink. Drinking is encouraged. There are people who I know who feel left out because of it, but it's a way to socialize. And by the way, one in five lawyers have a problem. Probably one of these is a person with a substance use problem. But our, what we think is, we think that's an alcoholic. That's what our culture thinks. That's what we think in the law. And I've had so many clients come in to me and say, I don't have a problem. I'm not an alcoholic. That's an alcoholic. I'm not getting help until I buy a dumpster. And they say, I'm not getting help for mental health because people will think I'm broken. They'll think I'm broken and they'll shun me. I'll be rejected. I don't need to be hospitalized. And people think that people with mental illnesses have to be hospitalized. That's not true. They look like us. Lawyers with mental health issues look like us. They look like there's a... We put on a facade. We shake hands. We look like that. One in three will have a problem. One of those has a mood disorder. But you know, we look good. Always. So we smile, and then we go off by ourselves and suffer. We need to change the profession be, and have a profession where seeking help and reaching out is the norm. We encourage all these great things that these people have said. We need a movement, like the women's movement, like the gay movement. All lawyers have to come together, all aspects, and consistently over time, persistently say, hey, we're valuing the whole person. There was a, as a result of that study, the American Bar Association and nine other organizations got together and created a report that sets out a pathway to create this cultural change in which we get together all the main players and we start each piece, each part plays a part. And we can go from this terrible challenges we have, it's not just the substance use and the mental health, it's lack of job satisfaction. It's other health issues. And law should be incredibly rewarding, satisfying, meaningful, remunerative. It's a fabulous way to make a living. And we need to have a culture that invests. We invest. The most important thing we can invest in is ourselves, is in people. 
That and the lawyers of an occupation, that's all we got, folks. That's it. We're it. Let's invest, and we've got five steps. We've got to get all everybody together. We've got to start to destigmatize help seeking behaviors. We have to commit to making a profession which is more inclusive. We have to take the steps necessary to promote well being as the goal. The whole person. And you know, leaders need to talk about it. I know a lot of my friends of my vintage. So now they're six in their late sixties, early seventies, and they're operating at high levels with good families. They do all this stuff. They've done it all their lives. But they haven't reached out, hadn't need to reach out for help. So they haven't talked about it. But they can be role models. And many of you I know have gone through problems. And one of the ways to destigmatize, the best way is to talk about it. To share your story. I, I just love that, Philip. Share your story. It's so much easier to open when somebody else says. And and also reach out to people who you think might be having problems. Because people with these issues, they isolate. That's one of the things they do. They stop doing all the good things, they isolate, and they still look good for an hour a day or whatever amount of FaceTime they get. But reach out to them, ask them how they're doing. Because you'll learn from it, they'll feel included, and we can have, but we should have, a really dynamic profession. Profession that's just so rewarding, so important to our society, now more than ever. We need lawyers, we need healthy lawyers. Healthy lawyers are competent lawyers. We can move from being driven to being inspired. And that's what this movement's about, is creating inspired lawyers. So join the movement.